Hey everyone, I'm Mary Delgado with the Blockchain Herd. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and I'm gonna ask you to please hit the like button if you will. Uh, I have a great guest today that I had actually on this channel a few months back and he is Hasib Iwan with Afani. And it's really interesting because I really wanna to talk to him today about the recent breach that we had with the ledger. So welcome to the show, Hasib. Uh, thank you, uh, Mary, for having me on the show again. Not the best of the moments, but you know that's what we as we are at right now. Yeah, what if, let's talk a little bit about um, you know what you've been up to, and then I want to go on about this ledger breach and and what your thoughts are as it relates to that, and um, also how it could relate to your company as well. Happy to. So uh, it's very unfortunate. I have a lot of respect for. Ledger, frankly, like, you know, they were innovative uh, and I'll let you, everyone know that uh, their leadership is good. And I'll tell you the reason for that because I've been a Ledger user and I've been using their products. So I want to take this opportunity to encourage everyone that we should not, uh, you know, we are in together. So basically I don't want this opportunity to bash anyone. I want this opportunity to see how can we not make this happen again because we have to learn from other people so to work together uh, and like, you know, see how can we protect more? Because frankly, this is a massive issue for everyone. Even we go through this all the time. Like, you know, we get attacked a lot. Every exchange get attacked. And frankly, uh, everyone is doing the really good job to keep everything secure as much as they're possible. Uh, ultimately, everyone is human. So I think uh, together we have to come stronger as an industry to make sure that people who are victim uh, are protected for the, any kind of future losses. Now, do you think that um, you know the, what happened with the ledger increases um, uh, even sim swapping threats uh, as well? Uh, I think that will be the easiest attack, frankly. Like you know, I'm certainly biased here because that's what we deal with. Uh, but sim swap attack is the easiest attack to carry on any person. So first of all, you're carrying on any person, but now you have a list of pretty much every information that you need to attack anyone. And I think that's the massive, uh, you know, that's the massive thing you can do. So, yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, uh, we have received almost, I think, 40 plus victims in the last 48 hours. I expect that to at least rise by 10x because when the holidays are approaching, uh, people are mostly away, and that's the best time to sim up or hack someone because you can't hold, like, on a Christmas Eve, you cannot get hold of your current carrier. So you will be out of SIM card for like a day or two. So then, so then with, with the, the ledgers that were, were hacked into, then um, people have like their email addresses and their phone numbers and, and uh, such information. Um, how is uh, your company, Afani, how can you uh, let people feel safe and secure to know that their information is safe using uh, your service? We don't want to protect, we don't want to claim something that's not secure. So if you use our service, uh, your information is there. We can't get rid of that. Uh, what we can do is no one can simply stop you. So for any kind of attack, generally there are a couple of attacks. Like if, if you want to attack into someone's digital life, you need their telephone number and then email address. That's pretty much what it is. Or two factor. If you have three of these, you can pretty much break into anyone's account. Um, so what normally people do is, they take your telephone number and they hack it, then go into email account and then they go into multiple other accounts. So that's what they do. My uh, question here is what we, what we can protect with, uh, with our services. We can guarantee that you will never get SimSwap. That we can guarantee. Now people can attempt it, but we can block any kind of attempt on that. Your information will still be there, but you're public, but you're secured. So we guarantee, we specialize in, this is our base. This is the only thing we do. We pro protect people from sim swapping. Uh, what's your opinion on, on what you think uh, were the vulnerabilities maybe with, with the ledger getting um, hacked? I think it's an API based. Obviously I haven't done a for forensic or that, but it's an API, API uh, problem. So what happened is I'll give you a simple example. Uh, we have our e-commerce systems and then we have our shipping department and then we have uh, you know, our cell phone security in our system. What we have done is we have not connected either of them. So technically if one portion got hacked, 
a person cannot get access to the second thing. But because they are a big comp- they are very, very um, massive company, I think this is like a quarter million dollar user. So I'm sure, I don't know how many users they have, maybe millions and millions of users. So what can happen is uh, they cannot follow our process because uh, it's too expensive. So during automation, one of the keys got leaked. And it's probably a zero day exploit, which means that was just exploit that um, someone injected. So by that means you basically trick an API to send you information. Um, and that's what happened there. And someone was able to take control of all the information. I haven't, I said, I haven't done forensic, but that's pretty common. If wow. you run such a big operation, because you're depending on software and the software just screwed up. Wow, uh, that's incredible. Yeah, it, a lot of people were really upset um, that that happened. I mean, a lot of their information is out there. And, um, you know, I, I, I think about also, uh, I guess, when you're connecting, um, let's say that you're connecting your phone to your uh, wireless headset or to your watch, um, how, how do you have some protection from uh, someone, if you have your service, from someone not getting it through the airwaves of you connecting to your, your you know, uh, ear pods or your, your cell phone watch? Is there something where you can do there to protect uh, when that happens through Bluetooth, I guess? I'll give you a bad news first, right? The bad news is uh, the customer that we offer the plan $19 does not protect against that, right? That's the bad news. The good news is we do protect, but we don't protect on this plan. We have a different plan that we don't offer to consumer uh, because they are super expensive. I'll give you an example. Like right now, I find the basic even safe plan is expensive than majority of the market. Um, we are probably the most expensive one in the market. And like now, Negro cell plan, the $50, $60, people are on family plan, they will pay like $40, $50. We don't give anything. We just say, we will give you two things, security and privacy. That's all we give. Other than that, we don't give you Netflix, we don't give you Hulu, we don't give you uh, Tuesdays, we don't <laughs> give you like t-shirts. Two things, security and privacy, right? We don't bribe you with new cell phones. We don't bribe you with points, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, so so your question around, uh, uh, so so the question is that, you know, how do, how can we protect it, I believe? I guess the, the, the thing with like our, our, our protection, you mentioned Bluetooth, we do have plans. The issue with those attacks that you're mentioning, number one, they do not, atta- they do not harm average consumer as much as they could, right? They harm very high profile, like we deal with scientists, athletes, uh, you know, celebrities, and that information is very public for them. But someone may not be interested in listening to a conversation with your husband. But someone may be interested in listening between us talking between Donald Trump and his wife, you know, they want to listen to that. So that attacks cost a lot of money and it has very, very specific use case. So an average consumer do not have that information like you're talking to like, like some scientist who's working on a, on a massive research. So you want to protect that. So that's why we don't offer it to consumer. Um, it's at least 10 times the cost of the current plan. But yes, we do protect against uh, those attacks too, uh, but not for consumers. So I'm I'm thinking about like a consumer who who may uh, have a conversation about what they may have in their wallet or how much Bitcoin they have or you know those types of private conversations. Um, uh, is there a possibility of of a break in that way? It is, but it is. But the thing is, like you know, right now uh, the cost of doing that attack is very high. Like you need to be in proximity, you have to run some servers. It's, it's not like an easy attack to carry. Like um, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, SIM swap right now is very, very easy. You can have a 200,000, a quarter million people that you can do. Even if you do like hundred people, you have like at least a year worth of data, right? So why would not you pick up something that's easy? That's true. Yeah, you, you always want to get the low hanging fruit. I guess if you're trying to right. steal something, they go for the low hanging fruit, which you're saying that the SIM swap uh, is very easy. So uh, let's go back to the iPhone 12 as it relates to, to the two SIM cards. Um, I believe with your service, do you have to get a new phone number? Um, and can you utilize the two SIM cards for like maybe secure and non-secure? Is that, uh, is that, can you do that? 
So you don't need a new number. We secure your current number. So what I, we actually recommend that people use your current number. So if you have a current number, we'll secure the current number. You don't have to change number with us. So that's uh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So you can have a new number, but we do not recommend having a new number. And we strongly discourage people from changing the number. Mm -hmm. So then it's just a matter of just porting porting the the number over to correct. your service. Correct. 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 Yeah. You just have to make an upgrade to Fani take five to six minutes and you're good to go. Okay. And, and you, and you have a staff that's constantly, um, like they're, you, they're trying to break in, uh, just to make sure that, that it is safe and it is secure for your end user. Right. Uh, correct. So nothing in the world is un uh, unbreakable, right? Like frankly, even you can attack Bitcoin by a 51% attack. The only thing is how practical it is. So we make it super difficult that it's not easy to, so I'll give you example among, 270,000 customers, quarter million customers. If 1,000 people are on Ifani, so a hacker would not attempt because it will take him 10 times or 20 times more effort to do that. So he will just pick up the one that's the most easiest one. So that's what I'm trying to tell you is that how easy it is to, uh, you, as I said, you, you'll pick up the, the lowest hanging fruit. Yeah, the, and that's what they, they go after. And, and uh, SIM swapping is, is very easy, but but not with, with your service, you know, that's for sure. Um, what, what um, give me your, um, uh, what you think that possibly Ledger could have done differently? Is there something they could have done differently to not let this happen, this hack happen? Would you, what, what advice would you give them so this might not have happened? Uh, so I think whenever you depend on any external API, the problem with us is like, I'll give you an example. We use a courier company, right? What if the courier company get hacked? You know, uh, like uh, it's beyond my control. You know, uh, we use a couple of software that every company uses. So, and it's impossible. Like I'll give you an example. We use Google. Mm -hmm. What if Google got hacked, right? Like what else can you do? We are on a Zoom call. What if Zoom got hacked? So every company has to use some software to run their business. What we have done in our companies, we have minimized the use of external softwares. So we do a lot of things that are unscalable. Like, you know, you cannot scale them. We cannot, we have a very uh, difficult process to onboard a customer. We have a very difficult process to ship customers. Everything is done in-house. So, and it's not scalable. The scale at which with uh, Ledger operates, uh, you know, if, if it was us, we would have Frankly, like we are over capacity. We cannot even handle one hundredth of the customer that Ledger have, right? Uh, so we wow. basically cannot operate on that scale. So the problem, whenever you scale, you have to start depending on those issues. And that's what we are ch having a challenge too. Like we, we do not want to scale where we cannot compromise without compromising on systems. So I don't blame uh, Ledger a lot, frankly. I think one thing they probably would have done is because they don't need the customer data once the SIM card has been, Ledger has been shipped they could have just deleted the data. Mm. That probably they could have. And I think this would have good practice and thinking about like, we can have probably, we can probably do the same thing too. Uh, and because the only issue is because we are subscriber based, so you have to uh, subscribe everything. So maybe it's a chance for us to basically download and dump the data somewhere, encrypt it and just delete it from the website. So I think that we probably will do too. Uh, because frankly, um, what if my merchant got expired? Like, what if my payment processing have an issue? There's so many unknowns. It's just that Ledger got unlucky with one specific thing. So I said, I will not take this opportunity to bash on someone. I'll just say, how can you make it more secure? Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, attacks happen all the time. Like people, an average, uh, I think in every, every second, three Americans become victim of cybersecurity attacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as I'm listening to you, I, I don't hear that you're bashing anyone, and you're not. You know, it's it's something that happened. You know, as they say, you know, things happen. It's not that you don't really say it. Things happen, but <laughs> it does happen. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. And um, you know, you were talking about subscribers and the amount of subscribers that you. What are you up to now? How many subscribers? Uh, I can't tell the number because uh, of security reasons, like you know, but pretty much we have doubled in the last one week. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. 
Um, what are you, uh, what are you, you were talking about um, scalability and, you know, just ensuring that you, what's most important to you, obviously, is the security of, of your subscribers. So what do you, do you have any plans for as you're growing, because you're growing, you know, by leaps and bounds, do you have any plans on how you could continue to make everything even more secure uh, as you continue to grow? Uh, certainly that's like something that does not make me sleep like you know it's kind of uh, uh, scary because what we do we provide security and what if we get breached you know this is something that basically keeps me awake at night so what we do is we try to minimize the information that we have we deny all accesses to everyone in the company so no one in the company have access to anything uh, pretty much once we ship the stuff like uh, I once the system is shipped I cannot even do a lot, anything uh, my, my sets get locked out we use hardware keys like I have like these keys, we have like two or three of these keys for every individual customer. Like we are doing everything possible, frankly, mm -hmm. uh, that we can do. But ultimately, as I said, as a human, we are limited by a technology that around us. Mm -hmm. So we just have to make sure that we, I'll give you a simple example. We are shipping gift cards. Sorry, we are shipping uh, like a regular greeting cards for the holidays. So the convenient process for us was to just ask a third party to ship all the cards. It's mm -hmm. convenient, but what we did was we, brought every card in-house and we are manually writing the address on every everything wow. Wow. so now it's like hundreds and hundreds of cards that we're sending and it will take us like maybe uh like maybe a week to ship out all those cards because it's a lot of work to basically type your name but we didn't want it to share our customer list with anyone it's safe well there are way. a lot of yeah but there are a lot of services which you provide like they say hey excel sheet give it to us and we'll do it mm -hmm. right so like with, with, with our shipping partners, uh, we directly work with the, the main company while we can use a third party, which is cheaper. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, uh, you know, the cost and risk, it's basically a, it's massive risk. So we try to mitigate all, as much risk as possible. But again, we are humans and, uh, uh, you know, like something like Ledger can happen to anyone. Well, like you were saying, your your main objective um, and handwriting of those is uh, is to keep your customers' information safe and secure. You don't want it to just be out there. You know, I think about like when you uh, when you call your phone company, your, your Sprint's, your AT and T's. How easy it is to um, get into your account. All you have to do is give them like whatever your four digit PIN is or your password or or something like that, just by calling in. So um, you know, I like the fact that you make it very very difficult. Uh, for anyone uh, to, to call in and you don't give any information out at all. Absolutely. And that's the other part. Like, you know, we had some attacks that people tried to take. Hey, can you do this for me, my husband and this? And that's why we say people do not call us. Like, why would people call us? People generally call us to cancel a plan. We say, okay, if you want to cancel a plan, we'll start the process. And we generally make a phone call next day and we do some verification and we start the process. Uh, we have less than 1% churn rate, so we can afford to do that kind of scalability and do those things that a lot of companies cannot do that because we uh, uh, it costs us a lot of money to, like we have to go through a lawyer, we have to spend some money and make sure that everything is uh, is taken care of. So that a lot of major companies cannot do because they have tens of thousands of port outs every day. So they cannot go through, it's like getting everyone through TSA or like secondary check every time you enter an airport. You know, mm -hmm. it will basically choke up the entire industry or whenever you enter a city, you go through like as your passes through immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we do that. And second part, what it is, is that, you know, uh, we only have one plan for the same reason, because we do not have anything. We have only one thing, $19. Either you want it or you don't want it. Someone cannot call in, hey, can I switch to a different plan? No, because we don't have anything. The only thing is like, either you go to a different carrier, you stay with us. Mm -hmm. And this was specifically done for the same reason. That's why we don't offer family plan because the problem with the family plan is that uh, one person in the company get compromised. So think about it. Uh, if you are the high risk, it's very easy to find out who's the weakest link in your, in your, in your family plan. And you will attack the weakest link. That's and right. once you attack the weakest link, then basically you will find out uh, who is the, uh, who to attack. Right. So it's, uh, it's like a, one of the BBC holes where they have to kick out everyone. Mm -hmm. with the food the weakest link mm -hmm. and so similarly in, in a family plan people have like 20 people on the family plan and uh, basically any one person of those person can get breached and can take over the entire family 
Right, right. You start off. You start off with the easiest one, like you were saying, to to get to, and then, um, but then you can reach, like you know, to to the the um, the big boss uh, of the whole right. plan. So, um, like we were saying, low, low hanging fruit. Um, do you have any any uh, upcoming news of something that you might be doing? I know that you only concentrate on one thing. You're 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 good at one thing, and that's what you want to concentrate, which is uh, good for your uh, subscribers. But uh, do you have any upcoming news that you'd like to share with us? Uh, no, so we are working on an enterprise customer. Like you know, we will uh, uh, we will we will focus on uh, enterprise customer. Like you know, we are getting a lot of uh, interest from funds, uh, crypto exchanges, lawyer firm. That's our focus. So that will be our focus for the next year. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, that will be our focus for the next year. So consumer brand will grow, but like we don't make a lot of money on consumer. And it's not about like, money. It's like basically uh, consumers are a difficult task because sometimes people are on family plan. So this brand will will keep on growing, but our main focus will be enterprise in the next uh, 12, 18 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will keep it simple. Like we will, we don't have any plan to, maybe we increase the price for the new customers because um, we are adding some other features but obviously anyone who's grandfather will stay but i don't know like mm -hmm. it's not like we are thinking too far ahead because every day we wake up we want to solve the problem you just said you were adding new features um can you talk about what those features that you potentially yeah. are working on so yeah so there are two features that you want to work on so one is data deletion uh where we delete all the information from the internet like there are 120 plus brokers who are basically selling your information so we want to talk to them and delete your information uh, the other thing is maybe wait, wait, offering I, a product. I'm sorry, can you go delete your information from the internet? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So, okay. so we are working with that. The problem with that is like, you know, it's a very, very complex system and it's not 100% accurate. So we are outweighing that because our service works 100%. But what if the other service does not perform 100%? What if perform 97%? Then people will relate it to that 97%. Okay, you know, this thing works, this thing doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at a risk of how can we make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's one thing. The second thing is that uh, we are working on impersonation. So a lot of people get impersonated on the internet. And so we have not developed, but we are working with a firm basically where if you upload your main profile and if you upload your picture, what it will do, it will scan through the computer, to the social media and find out if there's any information available on you who's trying to impersonate on your account. Wow, that's incredible because I, I see that um, a lot. I mean, you, you see it at, like on Twitter and on Facebook and, um, you know, where people are impersonating someone else and you have to say, I'm the real, you know, whoever. Yeah. Um, like you were saying, Donald Trump has the real Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, you do, you do get a lot of that. And then you also have, uh, even out on the internet, some information that people may not want out, out there. Um, if you do a lot of research uh, out on the internet, you can find yeah. someone's address, you can find someone's phone number, all of that information is, is out there. So um, I think that's, that's great that you're working on something like that. I mean, I think that's invaluable for sure. Yeah, except the only problem is like, you know, it's almost impossible to get rid of it 100%. So I think the inner decision of like making a product perfect is, is something that basically, and few industries you cannot afford any kind of bad reputation. So I'll give you an example. Uh, on, a, on a plane, you cannot, 99.999% is not enough because that means you will have 10, 10 uh, crashes every day, mm -hmm. you know? So even if you make it 99.99999%, it's not enough, you have to be 100%. So I'm concerned about if someone used that product and it's not like 99% and something basically fresh will crack, what will it do to our marketing? What will it do to our, our brand? Um, it's like one person, if hypothetically, uh, one person got SIM sapped, our business is done, right? Basically, we basically lose everything. So I'm just thinking very about like, you know, what can we do 100%? And at one point of time, we can start taking some risk on, okay, you know, it's not, okay, you know, we can, we can tell customers, okay, this was 100%, this 97%. So it's all about brand dilution about where we come in and how people present it. Like so far, we are comfortable with the position of having being the most secure and private cell phone service in America. Wow. So um, if you had to give some advice uh, on two fronts, uh, some advice on uh, uh, consumers and uh, with their with their ledgers, 
uh, what advice would you give? And then also, uh, I already know what the answer is going to be to this one, but uh, as it relates to people with their cell phones, what, what advice would you give on both those fronts? So I think my advice is pretty same, and I think I give it to everyone, not just with crypto, with ledger hack, but in general too. Um, a person will basically, so there'll be four types of attack that will happen. Number one will be SIM swap. So people will be able to SIM swap. Number two on your email address, because that's public. Number third will be on identity, because obviously your identity is there, so some people would like to use their identity and do a regular identity theft. And fourth will be physical attack. I think physical attack is the lowest one in the America, US, because there's other attacks. Like there's so much stuff out there that, I'll give you an example, your payment is basically going to a tree and there's so much fruit on the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll basically pick up the low-hanging fruit to begin with. There's so much fruit on the lower hanging that you'll go with, which is a SIM swap. You can just easily do the SIM swap on anyone. Mm -hmm. And then the second would be email, because email is slightly difficult. Mm -hmm. And then you will come to identity theft, but pretty much everyone will get protected. So so take care of three things, four things actually. Cell phone, obviously I'm biased, use a funny. Uh, if you cannot afford a funny, there are cheaper products like Google Fi, cheap. You can get that, um, uh, you know. Uh, other product is you can also buy like a cheaper, uh, a ch change your telephone number or have other thing. Or if you don't live in America, obviously you're out of luck, so get like, two SIM cards and one keep separately. Uh, second part is email, use like a hardware keys and try to secure it. Uh, or at least use two-factor authentication. The third is um, identity theft, like in America, you can buy like products, uh, identity theft product, they're sub 10, um, and then you can just block all your credit scores and make sure you keep an eye there. And the fourth one is possibly uh, putting a camera on your house and have a light, uh, you know, and, but I, again, it all depends on people. Like, you know, people do not generally do things till uh, they are breached. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, usually when people are doing things is, is when it's, um, when they've already been, you know, hacked or when they've already been, yeah. you know, so that's when you do some. So, so you should be proactive and, and do a lot of these things to protect yourself because it could very easily ha happen to you. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think that all of those things were, were very important. And as you said, you know, the low hanging fruit is absolutely uh, your SIM card. And if somebody, if, if you get SIM swapped, then, I mean, that's going to lead to all those other things that you talked about, you know, your, your phone number, your um, even the two-factor authentication. If you get SIM swapped, then that person is going to get the the two-factor authentication, not you. So um, you know, I I really believe that that it's important to uh, be secure, and and Afani is a, a great source for that, for sure. No, absolutely. I think that's what what it is, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm biased, like you know. Uh, it's that I tell to everyone, like, you know, whenever I talk about something, uh, especially cell phone security, basically I want people to buy my service. Mm -hmm. So think about from this point of view, but the point is, uh, it, no one can basically argue that you cannot be sim mm -hmm. It's not something I'm just saying, hey, it may happen. No, it, can, it will happen. It's happening on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, especially in crypto. So now the thing is, what if your sim saps happen? Do you care or not? That's the question. Right. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I really appreciate you uh, talking to us about um, this unfortunate um, breach that happened with the with the ledgers. I appreciate you talking to us about um, Afani and the importance of um, SimSwap and having uh, security and, and using your service. I'm going to have all of your information uh, in the description below this video for everyone to, to find out how they can be safe, how they can be secure and, uh, and, and, and not get breached. Don't, don't get breached and then get the service. It will get the service first, uh, you know, and then you won't get breached. Right. So, um, you know, any, any party words that you would like to add for my viewers? No, I think one thing that I talked about crypto to everyone is like, you know, everyone think that they're not important. And, but frankly, they are like, you know, think about losing money and we are used to like calling our credit card companies and say, hey, can you do a chargeback? There's no chargebacks in crypto. <laughs> that, that's a very good point. There are no chargebacks in crypto. There is no credit card company that you can say, hey, I want to dispute this, you know, this, this charge. So that, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, you know, and as I said, uh, Haseeb, um, I really, really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're very busy trying to keep um, uh, your customers safe and secure. So I appreciate you taking the time uh, to stop by and talk to my viewers. 
Thank you. Thank you. No problem, Mary. Okay. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. Thank you. I want to thank everybody so much for tuning into my channel and thank you again, Hasib, for uh, talking to us uh, about Afani. As I said, I'm going to have all of his information in the description below. Make sure that you check it out and uh, make sure that you're safe and secure and don't get SIM swapped. So as always, you heard it here on the Blockchain Herd.